But God can give you something. And you don't have to struggle with it. But look, we never did struggle paying the note because it was automatic. We arranged other stuff. Because every month it came out automatic. $1,495 a month. Automatic. To Deborah went in on Friday. And 12 to the one point fifty nine. <laughs> so when the night of rain come around, that's not coming out. Yeah. I mean, you like to have fifty to hundred dollars a month. And as soon as that flood insurance come around, the devil can cancel that. <laughs> that's another two hundred dollars a month. And he flooded over here in one hundred fifty years. See, they're not in the women now. Pastor, you mean me, y'all to keep that? Uh -oh, God kept the 150 years, he's gonna keep it going. Right. <laughs> Read the text. Oh. He is Lord of all. Uh -huh. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea uh -huh. and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now, get ready for the word that was preached after the preaching of and the baptism of John. But see, what John was doing was preaching repentance. He said, no, we need to change. He said, well, everybody needs to change. Change your way of your mind and thinking. That's what John was preaching. Amen. It, was a, it, was a, it was a preaching. His message was mainly of repentance. We need to have a change of mind, the way we think, the way we do, the way we, we act. But the gospel that when Jesus came, this is watch what the Bible said. Read it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with he, the Holy Spirit. He first preached, first of all, I've been anointed of God. In other words, God has put his stamp of approval. See, when you've been, when you've been ordained by God or ordained by an organization, or by, like when I ordained a uh, minister to become uh, an ordained minister, I'm putting my personal approval. Amen. That's why I don't do many of those. Amen. I license anybody that said God called me. Amen. But ordination. You gonna have to get my IT before I give you that. <laughs> but I'm saying I'm putting my personal proof. All right. All right. I had another minister. He was uh, getting ready to be called to a church years ago in early in our ministry, and he wanted me to ordain. I said I can't ordain you. See, I said I don't mind you going out and you know receiving this church the pastor. Right. I said, but I have, I'm gonna have to before I can put my personal proof. I said, I can't stop you. I'm not trying to stop you from pastoring. But I'm not going to give you pastor's life. No, I'm going to ordain you. So now, now I got my name out there. He was there about a year. He came back to me and told me, he said, Pastor, you tried to tell me. I tried to tell you, man. <laughs> See, it looked easy. And just got here, real back. And he can, He said, what should I do? I said, give him the keys back. That's what I told him. He told him right. And he, he gave him the keys back. Right. And they haven't been able to keep a decent pastor since. <laughs> That's been that 17 years ago. Wow. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Read what the word says. How God, has anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So, so what God did was he anointed, anointed or uh -huh, empowered Jesus with the Holy Ghost and the Father. Amen. I doubt, I have no doubt that you that are, that are Christian have not received the Spirit of God. All right. All right. But have you received him with power? Do you walk in authority? Do you speak things? The Bible says, here's how you know they are my disciples. He said, and these signs shall follow. <laughs> these have to be some signs follow. And he said, in my name, they'll cast out them. And a lot of times when the all begin busy and we see stuff kind of getting a little spiritual up there, we want to be kind of way over to the side. But see, you want to have authority over the devil. You shouldn't be afraid of the demon. The demon can't hurt you. 
unless you do not have God working in your life. And you'd be like in the book of Acts of the sons of Sceva. When the Bible said, oh, he tried to talk to the sons of Sceva, tried to cast out the devil. In, in that name, that Paul said. That's what the Bible said. They didn't say the name of Jesus. They said, they talk about Jesus. But that, that, that name that Paul said. So that's the Bible. When we adjure you, we, we command you to come out. And the Bible said them seven sons of Sceva up there trying to cast out them so they'd be somebody. And the Bible said the devil's jumped on them, beat them up, whooped them out of their clothes, and the scripture said they ran off naked. Now, the devil can't hurt you if you don't have God in your life. Don't you be getting up here shaking his face. You must be praying for you. And they hear somebody say, that's it, that's it. And they have this one, that's it, that's it. You don't know if that's it or not. <laughs> I'm trying to hear it, brother. Come on, read this thing, read this thing. Who went about doing good. <laughs> After he was anointed, he went around doing good. Somebody said doing good. Doing good. If conflict and confusion is following you, that's not a God. Amen. If you cause a confusion and conflict, you're supposed to be going around doing good. All right, all right. Then we'll say, well, I'm, all I was doing, I was just trying to do yeah. good. Mess it, mess it. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. So I don't care if you were trying to do good. If you didn't do it with the right attitude and, oh, help me, oh, my God, and the, the right motives, it causes confusion and conflict, and that's not of God. But the Bible says he does, Christ does not offer Confusion. Read it. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What he healed or what he uh -huh, made whole again was those that were oppressed of the devil. Sometimes that, 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 that meant that if the devil was using sickness, he did heal your sickness. <coughs> if he was oppressing you in your mind uh -huh, by uh -huh, lowering your self-esteem, if he was doing something to burden you down about some situation about your life or that happened in your life, he healed him of that. Right. It wasn't just about healing bodies and wielding on. It was about dysfunction. Oh, man. The anointing will straighten out your dysfunction. The stuff is not working right. It's not operating right. Because the Bible said, I read it up there a minute ago. The Bible let us know that, that he, he, does not, he does not have a respect for the person. And the gospel was a gospel of peace. It made things right where there was things were, were not right. Read it. For God was with him. Uh -huh, read. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews uh -huh. and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and, and hanged on a tree. Let me explain this to you so you'll know this. Christ was hung on a tree. They take a beam of a branch of a limb that was sturdy enough to hold a man's <coughs> body. And they would put it across his shoulders and stretch their arms and tie that beam to his shoulders, uh, arms on each side. And then they would take whips and whip them up Calvary's field. This wasn't just Jesus. This, that's what they did all that they crucified. The two thieves that were on the cross, they had to do that same march. They had a beam across their shoulders that they were carrying that cross. They called it a cross, but it was a tree. Y'all not in here. It didn't become a cross till they got to Calvary and they hung it. They would take that person and pull them up with that beam. And then the beam was this way shorter than it was vertical. Yes, and it made a T, it made a cross. Yes, but what he was carrying wasn't a T, it wasn't a cross. It was a beam on the shoulder. Y'all like that. Yeah, so what they did was when they got to carry it, that same beam, you remember, Jesus was so weak he couldn't carry it. And they compelled oh, Simon to carry his cross. Mm -hmm. But it was a beam that he compared him, uh, compelled him to carry Simon was from the northern part of Africa. Come on, man. He was a black man. 
The Bible says he's the father of Rufus and Alexander. Y'all not in there. That's why I said y'all know he was black Rufus. <laughs> and while he's laying on that beam, they nail his hands to that thing. Now, they can keep you tied to the cross or they can nail you to the cross. And they chose to nail him. Then they put his feet one on top of the other and nailed him to the vertical beam after they had him hung up there. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. And so the scripture said they killed him on the tree, and that's what it was. Always remember that. Amen. That the vertical part of the cross is already stationary in the ground. And whenever they would uh, crucify somebody, they would take that beam part, and they would hoist it up, and they had notches in it, and they notch it in there and put it. So when they got through, got ready to get that person down, they pulled that little beam part out and lowered it. Oh, y'all, I didn't hear it. Come on, read it. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. After Christ arose from the dead, he was eating and drinking Amen. with his disciples and others. After he rose from the dead. He did not show himself to everybody. Y'all need to get a lesson right there. Everybody not going to have this experience. So that's some experience. Some of you not going to see demons like I saw demons. But God said, I'm messing with you. Y'all not in there. I've seen, that. I've seen in, in, in a dream. I'll just do this real, real quick. I saw in a dream on Preston Street. I was raised down at the, the end, at the bottom of Preston Street going toward the downtown area. And I saw three people. <coughs> Myself was one. And I saw a, another preacher and another person. And all three of us was trying to come up Preston Street here into Pinehurst. This was back in, I can tell you what it was, 1973. And when I saw that, we were walking up the street, we were walking, we were trying to talk in, just having a good time. And we got about halfway, and then it became a little stream of water. It was just, it was, you couldn't even measure it, it was so just a little trickle of water, like the water was just running down the street. We, we went a few more steps, and then the water began to get a little higher, and got all the way up to our knees. And then we began to go a little further, then start coming up about our waist. But then something happened. We all were still wondering what's this, and we still walking and still going. But all of a sudden, that water began to smell putrid. <coughs> and one individual, they couldn't take it. They just turned back. The other guy, he, he, the preacher, he kept going. He kept going a little further. And the stench became stronger and stronger and stronger. And at a certain point, he turned around and he left. And here I am in this stream of water, now coming up to about my chest. Putrid. I can't even describe the stench. And I kept going. I kept going until I got the parameters. And I was the only one that made it. Y'all not in here. So God showed me a long time ago there's going to be things that's going to come. He said, you just keep going. Because when I got the parameters, everything was sunny. It was bright. But they quit. One of them was almost there. If he'd have just kept a few more steps, he'd have made it. One of them quit too soon. Just because of the water. Oh, y'all not in here with me. God will show you things and teach you life lessons. And I learned from a lot of times when I had dreams, God showed me. But God showed me something here about four or five years ago when I was just standing. And all of a sudden, on the ends of my eyelashes, they just started fluttering. They started fluttering. And then I saw in the sky, I saw, I saw sparkles like when a little spark of your light going forth. Fourth of July, and I just saw just millions and millions of sparkles. And, and then stuff was touching my eyelids. I kept batting my eyelids. And then when, finally I could open my eyelids, and it was just, it was, it was all types of 120 and $50 bills. Oh, and then when those sparkles, as they came.